Hey guys, good morning. It's freezing cold Norwegian place. I believe it's sweltering at home. And uh, I'm thinking about you, but it's uh, it's about one degree here at the moment. But I'm probably to be able to just spend a bit of time talking to good people and uh, thinking of you guys. But we're talking about what it means to fight the good fight using the counterintuitive method that Jesus recommended of just loving people. Greatest weapon out there is just to love people. Unconditionally, not asking for anything back, just love the people. It's a practical thing. We have to find a way to be able to do that. They don't need words, they need action. Anyway, I want to continue this today because whenever we love, we, we put ourselves in a position of real vulnerability. When you love, you're opening yourself up to be disappointed. You're opening yourself up to be really disillusioned sometimes. Because people, when they respond to love, don't always respond the way you want them to respond. Some people will respond with a sense of, well, it's about time. You know, some people will respond, well, actually, I don't really need you. Or some people will respond by saying, who do you think you are? And every one of those responses can be found to be really hurtful. And so we have to prepare ourselves. We have to prepare our minds and prepare our thinking for maybe the fact that we might be hurt as we continue to love. Now there's a whole bunch of people out there who I think are looking at me today and saying, yeah, I know what you mean. I loved, look what happened to me. I loved and I was disillusioned. I was loved and I was rejected and I was loved and I was misunderstood. And uh, there are many people that are out there today who are sitting out on the grandstands of life, watching the world go to hell and thinking, I'm not going to love you because you hurt me. Well, here's the deal, people. Get over yourselves. Because isn't that what Jesus did? Jesus came, he loved the world. They didn't treat him too good, did they? They didn't treat him well at all. Oh, they were a few fans that followed him around, a handful of followers that he ended up with. But in the main, they misunderstood him. They misused him. They hung him upon a cross, beat the beat heck out of him. And they crucified our Lord and our Savior, the most loving, kind, meek person who ever lived. If they did it to Jesus, people, they're probably going to do it to us. But it doesn't mean we don't do it. So to those of us who sit out on the grandstand saying, Yep, I know I need to love, but you don't know how hurt I've been. Well, I'm appealing to you today to say, get back in the game. You know, in, in, in the game of rugby, we often uh, use this analogy of yellow cards. And when people mess up, God sometimes says, okay, here's a, a yellow card. You may have to sit in the sin bin for a little while. And sometimes our, our sin can be caused by an emotion of anger or rejection. And those emotions can lead us to do terrible and sometimes hurtful things, sometimes even more to ourselves than to anybody else. And so when we need to get back in the game, it is a time after 10 minutes at a rugby game that God says, okay, blow the whistle, get back in the game and pick it up from where you left off. But one thing I have noticed is that God never red cards anybody. In a red card in a rugby game, well, that's it. You're out of the game and probably the next one as well. That's it. You're out of it for good. Well, I want to tell you people, God, I've never seen him give a red card. For people who have messed up, people who have done wrong. Peter was yellow carded for a while for the little bit of mess up that he made. David the king, got he got yellow carded for a little while. But there was never ever a red card issued by God. God says get back in the game. Continue to live. Toughen up maybe. But continue to do what Jesus told you to do. Despite rejection despite mis being misunderstood let's get back in the game we've been yellow carded maybe the whistle is blowing time to get back on the field make it practical people make it strong make it a good resolve and know that this is the way our faith has to work life is not complicated it's the simple truths of life that make life work. It's the simple truths of life that at the end of the day, we're able to look at our lives and say, man, okay, there were some tough times, but, but I did it right. And I continue to love and look at the blessing that has come at the end of the day. And you'll only know it at the end of the day. So continue, despite what you may be going through, despite the discipline, continue to love, continue to give, continue to sacrifice 
because it's not the end of the day yet. At the end of the day, God's going to say to you, well done, man, and thanks. Thanks for being my hands and feet. Thanks for loving when nobody else responded positively to your love because now is your reward in heaven. Mm, I love that thing. Keep it in mind. It'll keep you inspired. It'll keep you motivated. And let's continue to love. Guys, have a fantastic day and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.